Greetings and salutations, fellow truthers and flat earthers. Welcome back for more mainstream hacking, flat earth smacking, globe earth whacking, doses of truth coming at you fast and furious today. The last couple videos I've been tinkering around with an entirely new flat earth model based on the transverse equatorial aspect of the azimuthal equidistant projection, or what I just call the T model for short simply because it allows us to perfectly match all seasonal sun angles, paths, and positions never before possible in previous Flat Earth incarnations, and because it unexpectedly yielded a figure-eight path completed by the sun each year, as fully evidenced by repeated analemma patterns that faithfully depict the sun's vertical path north and south of the celestial equator as it performs its annual dance of declination, beautifully demonstrated by astronomy software such as Stellarium as well. However, the sun's daily east-west paths are ellipsoidal circles, where everything above the equator operates virtually identically to the AE model with the sun completely encircling a central north pole, approaching the Tropic of Cancer, traveling clockwise for six months, then crosses south of the equator where it directly approaches the southern Tropic of Capricorn for the remainder of each year, most directly during the southern summer solstice, and on only two particular days each year, on the all-important equinoxes, does the sun follow virtually straight paths, first as its northward crossing during the vernal equinox, followed by its eventual southward crossing autumnal equinox. I reached each of these rather surprising conclusions only after an exhaustive study of regional sun projection diagrams culled from every available latitude on Earth and cross-checked all of the empirical data against trusted sites like timeanddate.com and suncalc.org, choosing this specific projection because it offered the clearest way of presenting the latest sun path information that lays out all seasonal trajectories even more competently and efficiently than the heliocentric model, as I shall now demonstrate. I am proposing that Earth's natural electromagnetic field, known as the magnetosphere, involves two equally stable and opposite circumpolar vortices over a flat Earth, with an electromagnetic central line of propagation running east to west instead of north to south. This simple 90-degree rotation of the magnetic directions finally explains why the sun, moon, and stars are continually propelled east to west while simultaneously explaining the continued stability of the counter-rotating circumpolar vortices generated within the north and south. It's exciting because it neatly explains how the sun, acting just like an electromagnetic pulse, follows the Earth's natural magnetic field lines, traveling in clockwise circles in the north over the Tropic of Cancer and counterclockwise circles in the south over the Tropic of Capricorn, while at all times still maintaining an east-to-west trajectory for all observers locally in addition to its rather straight east-to-west paths directly over the central line of propagation during the equinoxes, and again matches all recorded regional star trail motions, including around the north celestial pole star Polaris, the south celestial pole area near Sigma Octantis, as well as the perfectly straight overhead star trails running east to west over the equator. Furthermore, this model explains exactly why we have a celestial equator and why the celestial equator remains fixed at one location regardless of where it is observed on Earth, something that classic heliocentric theory fails to explain at all. In the night sky, the celestial equator appears absolutely straight from any point on Earth and remains geographically fixed over Earth's equator. Officially, the celestial equator is caused by Earth's alleged rotation, but if the motion of the stars is caused by Earth's rotation, the celestial equator should in fact follow each observer from latitude to latitude, as any observation of it must be 90 degrees perpendicular to Earth's axis of rotation, which causes people at different latitudes to observe different celestial equators. In this outstanding animation put together by Free Energy, notice the red lines even with the observer's perspective and how circles above the red line appear clockwise while circles below the red line go counterclockwise 
and observe the ever-changing location of the celestial equator as it appears to follow the observer. So changing one's location does not affect the apparent motion of stars. This proves that there is no axis of rotation. Therefore, there is no axial rotation, period. Stars like A and B rising up from the east are propelled further and further apart as they head westward, causing real stars within the night sky to slowly stretch and expand away from one another. This separation of stars as we observe them is simply not possible upon a rapidly spinning ball. For on a spinning ball, the celestial equator would in fact be a matter of perspective, whereas the actual celestial equator remains geographically fixed, proving once again that Earth is not a spinning ball. While it is true that the heliocentric model correctly predicts the rising and setting sun's azimuth angles, there are in fact discrepancies between predicted seasonal sun paths and what we see in reality. In the heliocentric theory, there are five main parallel latitudes, known as the five parallels, as they are parallel to one another. These include the Arctic Circle, the Tropic of Cancer, the Equator, the Tropic of Capricorn, and the Antarctic Circle. For our purposes here, let's focus upon the central three main parallel latitudes, the two tropics and the equator. Sun path diagrams in heliocentric textbooks always depict these three paths as perfectly parallel to one another, as shown here, regardless of the changing angles and altitudes pertaining to sun paths as observed at different latitudes, the 23.5 degree separation of these three seasonal paths and their parallel nature are always a constant. In fact, spherical trigonometry demands these paths be straight and parallel, and heliocentrism absolutely insists upon this as well. The sun is supposed to follow these paths perfectly near the two solstices and two equinoxes over the tropics and equator respectively. Yet in reality, these paths can be shown to be neither straight or parallel. Showing these sun paths as parallel in school books is misleading at best. Even at 20 degrees north latitude, just a few degrees under the clearly curving Tropic of Cancer on the blue June solstice line from directly overhead, again, no straight parallel paths to see here. Remember, during the June solstice, the sun is supposed to be directly 90 degrees overhead, moving straight across. Yet even at 17 degrees north latitude, where a dashed black line showing perfectly level has been added, the orange colored line up top showing the sun's path right over the Tropic of Cancer is clearly not straight. Yet smart globe wings like Flat Earth Math will insist the sun travels perfectly straight across the sky all day long. And why? Because they have internalized false academic propaganda such as this and truly believe these sun paths as straight and level during the solstices. Even as we near the equator, where the sun's path does travel straight overhead in both equinox dates, at 8 degrees north latitude, where all three paths should be perfectly straight and parallel, the two colored in solstice lines at top and bottom vehemently disagree, because reality doesn't care for adhering to deceptive propaganda. Do any of you out there seriously need to consult your equatorial mount scopes over this? Or do you simply refuse to believe in your own lying eyes? Because according to reality, just three degrees above the equator, the three colored in solstice and equinox lines are distinctly not straight or parallel, as so many graduate school diagrams attest to in total error. Want to get closer? Sure. How about just two degrees over the equator? Thwarted yet again, aren't we? Remember, ball earth geometry demands three parallel paths, especially at the equator, and all heliocentric diagrams insist on three parallel paths, especially at the equator. Yet here we find ourselves directly on the equator at zero degrees, asking, do these colored paths look perfectly parallel to you and without any deviation? It's clear as crystal now, for all to see, the rather liberal approach academia has concerning parallel lines, which, of course, 
Reality continues to sway asunder as one travels just south of the equator, as shown at Jakarta, Indonesia, located at 6 degrees south. Well, so much for the three main parallels actually being parallel, huh? You've been deceived. You've been lied to. Our children are being deceived and being lied to. Earth is not a spinning ball. Wake up, folks. Wake up. Unfortunately, the skies above aren't exactly AE friendly either. For on the classic AE model, how is it possible to see the South Celestial Pole and its circling constellations looking south from different longitudes? It would be impossible to face South in Africa, Brazil, or Australia and see the same constellations at the same time. You'd be looking in completely opposite directions. But in reality, they can be seen on the same nights. Keeping the same latitudes, here's the view looking south from Australia at 130 degrees east longitude, followed by Africa at 20 degrees east longitude, and finally looking south from Brazil at the Southern Cross at 60 degrees west longitude. On the AE model, where would one even look to view the singular south celestial pole? A look at the stars reveals that there are two identical celestial poles, yet the spinning dome ideology does not include a south celestial pole. There is simply no way to achieve two identical celestial poles under a spinning dome. And remember how the celestial equator appears straight from any point on Earth? The spinning dome does not explain the straight celestial equator. Finally, Southern Sun Pass proved to be a real deal breaker for the AE model, which expects the Sun to always arrive from the northeast and depart from the northwest as it continues around ever widening circles. But in reality, for six months each year, the Sun is seen rising in the southeast and setting in the southwest. Sun paths north of the equator work just fine half the year but south of the equator do not work so fine anymore. Again, because the rising southern sun arrives from the south of east, approaching the December solstice and departing south of west during the same season, and can further be projected along these same headings for no less than half of each year. As shown on sun projection diagrams for southern cities such as Rio de Janeiro at 23 degrees south latitude, in which I've added the highlighted non-existent sun path that would be necessary and expected for AE versions, and again the reality shown at 27 degrees south, followed by an imaginary sun path predicted by the AE version. Here's the reality at 32 degrees south latitude, and the phantom AE version sun path. Finally, the sun's true paths shown at 52 degrees south, followed by the elusive AE version that we'd expect, all of which proving collectively catastrophic for the old azimuthal equidistant ladders model. Way down under, there's even evidence of an Antarctica encircling sun at 67 degrees south latitude which makes one wonder how many true blue flat earthers have we lost over the subject of Antarctica. As the AE model was first created back in the early 1800s, when little was known about the subject. Yet today, there truly exist reams of scientific data all over Antarctica. And this proves the December solstice path of the sun at the very least encompasses the Antarctic Circle much like the international boating and yacht races do semi-annually as they circumnavigate the entire Antarctic Circle. Nevertheless, Flat Earth does have a promising future where all of these issues are accepted and incorporated with open arms. Thank you so much for watching.